This is Anitya Soma. I'm a real estate investor and real estate agent. On this channel, I talk about how to achieve financial freedom using real estate as a vehicle. And you know, personally, I have achieved uh, financial freedom through real estate. And you know, if you're interested to get into sales or thriving in sales, investing, you know, buy small multifamily or single family, whatever, then this channel is your answer. And without any ado, today I have a special guest. His name is Meena who you know have bought and sold like hundreds of units and in this video he's going to give you a detailed rundown of one of the specific uh, deal which he had done similar deals a multi-family like 60 unit multi-family unit uh, where pretty much like for no money now it's crazy how he put together this deal so without any you what do you mean? So, so far, interesting. So how did you get into these buildings? Yeah, so initially it was all like groundwork, legwork. Yeah, to go try and meet people, yeah. just try and talk. And the important thing there is you got to ask dumb questions. Because <laughs> yeah. don't make a mistake and think that you're not, you're dumb. You're, yeah. You are dumb. I don't know, it's And new, that's fine. Right? Yeah, exactly. The people who remain dumb are the ones that don't ask the dumb questions. And I've seen yeah. it all the time. People just afraid. I'm not going to ask this because ah, people will think I'm stupid. Yeah. I, I realized that probably 80% want to ask that question and they just don't and they'll never know the answer. Yeah. So just ask the dumb question. If someone says you're dumb, eh, well, you're dumb. So well, you're dumb anyways. They're yeah. right. <laughs> like, they're not wrong. Yeah. Right? So that's number one. And then uh, we got to the limo tour with yeah. Jeff Weibo and uh, Ben at the time. Yeah. We, we came to Windsor. It was my first time in Windsor. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that bus, there was three properties. And I was looking at the time, there was a duplex on Albert Street, yeah, you remember? I remember that property very well. So I'm like, the, the ground floor was completely gutted, ceiling <laughs> caved in, <laughs> just complete garbage. And the upstairs unit was almost renovated. Yeah. So it was a one bed and a two bed. And then they were selling that for $130,000. Yeah. So I was looking at it and then looking at everybody around me, because these are investors, right? Yeah. I'm like terrified. And I was looking, nobody wants to buy it. Look, this is going to take too much work. Mm. And it was correct. It took a, it took a lot of work. This is not, <laughs> not, a, not a mistake. <laughs> but then I asked him, like, well, what is too much work? Oh, like, okay. you have a lot of... Uh, I'm like, okay, well, I don't... And bear in mind, I know nothing about construction. Zero. Zero, yeah. Can't put an Ikea box together. Lego, <laughs> zero. I don't know anything, right? Uh, so I asked him, what does that look like? Mm. Well, you have to do all the drywall and the ceilings and you have to check them. I'm like, okay, well, what does that look like in numbers? What does yeah. that mean? How much does it cost? Yeah, they're like, okay, it's, you could spend north of 50 grand. Okay. Like, okay, well, it's 130 and then 50. Mm -hmm. So now we're closing in 180. In my head, I'm like, okay, I could buy it, initially start with a turnkey one, mm -hmm. but turnkeys at the time were like 250, 300. Or I could take this and in my head, I'm like, this is a course mm. and I'm going to take it they say it's 50. I'm probably going to spend 80 because yeah, I'm dumb. Because you're new. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to make the mistakes. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to buy this. If I lose 10 grand, I won yeah. because I learned you all learned, the things. Yes. Now I you learned, know what drywall. <laughs> yeah. What renovations are, what, yeah. how do you renovate a unit, how do you rent it? Like yeah. all the things that I need in real estate is going to be in this building. This is yeah. my course. Mm -hmm. So I told the, I started like Googling what rents are okay. in the city. Oh, Because right I've there. never been. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, I was in the bus, like, well, why are people not buying it? Let me look at the rents. And the rents were, you know, roughly the two bedroom, I don't know, like 14, 14 and yeah, up, like yeah. 900 or 1,000, something yeah. like that. So I'm like, this makes a lot of sense. More than one person. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been looking at deals, like, they're all like 400,000 for a duplex. With, yeah. So it didn't work. So I'm like, why am I not buying this? Yeah. I even, I even uh, afterwards, I asked you, is this area, like, it's not the best area, but for the price, I don't think you can yeah. really go wrong. So I'm like, okay. That's my yeah. example. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. That's this is my, it's like, eh, how can I, like, if I can't really lose that much, because yeah. your downside is capped. Yeah. Right? Like, there's a building, so you're not going to go to zero. Yeah. It's not going to go way below 130. No. Right? So, like, it's two units at the end of the day. So, if I renovate and rent it, then I'm, I should be okay. So, I got that out of the way, and then I talked to Ben, who was selling it. I'm like, can you lend me the money? He's like, I can Literally, lend you the you money. you asked him? Yeah. Well, he was offering, like, if someone wants. Yeah we could lend him a portion of it or whatever. I'm like, can you lend me? The I don't have this money. Mm -hmm. Can you lend me the money? He's like, okay, well, this much percent, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right. So I got that part sorted. So you, you got the like full lending on the purchase price? Yeah. Cool. So you just need to ask. Yeah, you just need to look literally, right? And then at the time, Ben, right, he, he wanted to sell the building. That's yeah. cool. 
but also to him, ah, this is the new guy, whatever, yeah. let's teach him. I finished it in about May of 2020, yeah. uh, and it refinanced for 350. Like the gross yes. amount was 350, yeah. they got me 80% of that, and it worked out fucking Perfect. beautiful. Yeah. And then you so sold you it for me for yeah. 450. 450. <laughs> yeah. Like market went up, all these yeah. things. Yeah. And I, I firmly believe you could read all you want, you can't learn as much as you do from you do, doing the yeah. thing. You yeah. can't. It's impossible. Agree, yeah. Right? Read a thousand real estate books. You know nothing compared to the guy who did one duplex. Yeah. It's impossible. You could know all the things. Yeah, because now you've got the real world. Yeah. You know, what's the nitty gritty goes into it. Exactly. He knows this street. Yeah. He knows this, these people. So then what made you to switch from the smaller deals to completely like now you're doing like 60, 40, 50 units. What made you that switch? Well, it's because it's fundamentally the same thing, right? Fund yeah, yeah. It's like the same thing on a duplex is the exact same thing on a 10 year. In fact, to me, it's a little bit easier. On the multifamily. On the multifamily, it's easier because in here I'm only capped. I only get this rent and this rent. Like yeah. that's it, right? You mm -hmm. can add value. Like there we added the basement, blah, yeah. blah, blah, cool. But th that's it. Yeah. But, and if you have 10 units, you could do that 10 times. And yeah. then you have the same trajectory, right? Yeah. So, but in multifamily, as you know, the numbers multiply pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's quite insane how easy it is to add value in the multifamily space. Yeah. Just probably everybody knows the numbers in general, but I want you to simplify it to like a dumbed down version. Yeah. The dumbed down version is, let's assume 5% cap rate. I know it's a little bit high for now, like people now are buying six and seven, but just assume five. Mm -hmm. If at a 5% cap rate, if you add $1, to the bottom line, so one net dollar a month, mm -hmm. right? That's around quarter of a million dollars in value. That's yeah. how fucking insane this is. Like, it's just a massive. No, just you're dealing in the volume. Yeah. Well, one of the most recent deals I did, which was at the time the biggest deal I've ever done, mm -hmm. was two buildings on Ulet mm -hmm. that total 60 units. So it was six zero on divided by two buildings. And there was extra, two extra vacant, vacant lots. Mm -hmm. That was the general census of the deal. This deal was interesting to me because I had approached it before mm -hmm. and it was cheaper before and I didn't buy yeah. it. And a lot of people I know actually approached that building and tried yeah. to buy it, but the I seller, I, you, you know, <laughs> I saw that building too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been on the market, but the seller was uh, relatively difficult yeah. and he had just this thing in his mind. He wanted a price yeah. and that's just what he wanted. And then when everybody, Okay, I tried to go in and you know talk. Well, this price doesn't work. He just wouldn't have it. Yeah. But my luck is that first of all, a lot of people came in yeah. and they just you know people just they put things to, yeah. under contract yeah. and then try and negotiate after yeah. with no basis. So that all mostly goes south, especially yeah. with sellers like that. Yeah. So I had stayed in contact. That's a very important point that you got to keep your a list of people mm -hmm. that you talk to and the things that you want to follow up later. Money is always in the follow up. So talking to the guy, this is how we, we made it work. Put it under contract. Mm -hmm. I know the guy wants, he wanted, like it was only 129 a door or something like that, mm -hmm. right? The buildings are old, their rent is very low. Yep. And I know for a fact that there is a lot of upside, yep. but that's a lot of work and a lot of money. Exactly. So I went back to the seller. Mm -hmm. And this is something I do with every deal. Yep. Whenever you're talking with someone, you need to establish a framework of talk. Who you are, what you want, and how you can help them. It's not about you. How you can help them. It's how you can help them. The seller. Yes. But before you establish that, you need to establish who you are. Yeah. So that, what does that look like? If you're an investor, cool. I'm an investor. This is what I do. This is how I do it. Mm -hmm. Or if you didn't invest before, I'm hungry. I want to buy buildings. I put 100 offers already. I talked to 700 people. Whatever it is that your thing is, mm -hmm. put it out there and be honest with it. Pe like I think we underestimate how intuitive people are because we think they believe everything's here or they don't. They, don't. they yeah. see you and it's, you can put on whatever mask. People usually sense it. Yeah. So I told them, listen, this is a big building for me. I haven't bought anything like this. I had a couple of duplexes and sixplexes, mm -hmm. but I've never bought anything like this. I purchase based on cash flow because I cannot finance it otherwise. Other people may have a bunch of money to park. I'm yeah. not that person. I'm an active investor. I need to put money and get the money out because I'm going to yep. borrow money. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? He's like, yes, I, uh, that's what I was doing. Hey, he was a big time lawyer, blah, blah, but he understood. When you so tell people I'm here to make money, mm -hmm. they understand it because they're here to make money too. Yeah. So for me now, 
I don't trust people who don't, who like try and come and help me only. Yeah. I don't trust you. Like I need you to, hey, I want to sell your building. I'll make commission, but I want to make you money so I could buy other buildings. Yep. I trust that guy because we have the same goal. Yep. So what, how it worked there, I'm like, this building you're asking for, you know, a little over 7.5 yep. million uh, with two vacant lots. I see the upside, mm -hmm. but here's why I can't do this deal. And I pulled up like an Excel sheet and I'm like, this is what the building is making now. And here are the expenses. He knows all that. Yeah. This is negative, right? I'm losing yeah. $10,000 a month on this deal. Mm. I can't make that work. So I'm happy to let the deal go if you'd like, but I'm the only honest guy that you'll find mm -hmm. because I'm telling you exactly what I need to make it happen. Yep. And he's like, I'm not dropping the price. I'm like, okay, no problem. So here's why I can do that. Here's how I can do that. Okay. I told him, I go, went to the bank and this is something that you need to learn is banks are not against you. They're just, they want to make money. Yeah. They don't care about you. Okay. So when the banks tell you no, it's not because they don't like you. It's because they don't trust that you'll make the money. You're a higher risk. So you need to look at them. They're basing me as a high risk because of statistics that they have. Mm -hmm. Am I going to beat those statistics or am I within them? So you mm -hmm. have to think it's a red flag. Yeah. I, in my head, I'm like, okay, I, I will beat those statistics. So I went to him, this is the bank. The bank will only give me 50% loan to value because based on your numbers, mm -hmm. because they only lend on DSCR, debt service yeah. coverage. So the debt, the income, we can talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. So based on that, the bank will only give me 50%. Yep. I can't give you 50% down payment. I don't have that money. Yep. So then back and forth, he's like, well, this is what it is. I'm like, okay, no problem. And then he actually let it, we cut the deal at that point. Yeah, I told him, this is what I need to get it done. He said, I can't do that. I'm like, okay, I, to be honest, I'm not able to do that unless you drop it here. Mm. He said, no, we let it go. Some, because someone else gave him a, an offer. Yeah. He said, I'll do it. But we both know, unless you have just money to park, yep. which was going to be dumb, and not a lot, like in that space, not everybody's just going to throw millions. Yeah. Right? You need $3 million down exactly. to get negative cash flow. It doesn't make it sense. It doesn't make sense. So I told him, if someone's going to tell you that, he's probably lying. Yeah. Or it's just a big... Or just trying some game. Yeah. So that's what happened. They came in, mm -hmm. and without any explanation or anything, they're like, no, this is what we're going to do. He said no. And then he came back. I told him, okay, you let it go. Now let's put it back under contract. Let me explain to you how I can make it work now. Mm. So then I told him, we had the property under contract, I think September in 2021. Yeah. Which and is like almost... Two years, one and a half year ago. Yeah, but I put it under contract then, and then I told him, okay, this building is now making $50,000 gross yeah. on average. I need this building to be 65 or 70. So the banks will approve this. Yeah. So what I need from you is I need six months mm -hmm. to go in the building and get the income up. Immediately, and this is something you will counter when you tell them that, oh my God, no, liability, I don't want to do it. Yeah. So I rephrase it. I'm like, this is... This is what I'm at, like, this is the proposal. I will work for you for free to get the income of your building up so I could buy it at the price that I worked for. Does yes. that make more sense? You can't say no to that. Yeah, right? exactly. Because I'm, you're literally working there for free. I literally increased the NOI yeah. so his price makes sense. Yeah. So when I asked the bank, I went to the bank. What income do you need it to be at 75% loan to value? Mm -hmm. They're like, we need 65,000 gross. That's like crazy. I'm like, beautiful. So I went to him. Mm -hmm. I'm like, the bank will not lend me until here. Yeah. So you can't do the work. So I will do the work. Yeah. And get the income there. So he reluctantly initially agreed, but then he did. And then now I went in, I told him, but there's another problem. Because now I have to put this much money. I don't have that much money. <laughs> because I don't. I told yeah. him from the beginning, I don't have that kind of cash. Yeah. So I'm going to need you to give me a VTB in second position. On this much money. On this much. So there's the remaining 25%. I didn't, uh, I essentially got around 18% or 20% in VTB. So mm. I had to come up with 5%. 5%. 5% down. But I didn't tell him that just 5% like, on a freaking 60, <laughs> 60 unit building. Yeah, well, <laughs> and then it's 0% interest. For, From VTB. The VTB is 0% interest for five years. It was like almost a million eight or something like that. Crazy. 
It is. However, but when I explained it to him, I didn't tell him that because because if you tell people I want to be DB, give me like it just you feel it's like gonna make taking sense. advantage of them. Mm. But I told him like this is why I need it. this building is negative. So yeah. when I increase it in six months, it's barely going to be positive. Yeah. So if I give you that money in interest, then I'm negative again. I can't yeah. make it work. I need to make money. Gotcha. Just to survive. I don't want to make money to go buy Ferraris. But at the same time, you're giving him what he asked for was his price. Exactly. So you're not getting away from that price. Yeah, I told him, because you need to understand what is the thing he's fixated on. Mm. There's a lot of people want a number just for the number's sake, right? Yeah. I told him, if I give you this number, I'm going to ask for a VTB, it's going to be 0% for five years. So essentially, you're losing money yeah. because the inflation, blah, blah, this probably lost, I don't know, 40% yeah. in the five years, at least. Yeah. And I told him that, you're losing money on this amount. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. Because you want this number. Yep. Right? I told him, if you don't want this number, okay, then I have to go here. So you got to understand what the thing is that the guy That's, wants. Yeah. A lot of them, there's vanity metrics. There's like, I bought it for a million. I sold it for seven. Whatever yeah, it is, yeah. the thing, you got to listen. When yeah. you're talking, you're not just, I do that all the time and it's a mistake. It's like you're talking to answer. You mm. don't talk to answer. You talk to probe mm -hmm. to get them to talk. Yep. Right? And you scan, you're scanning. What is, oh, this means he's traveling. This means yeah. he has kids. This means he wants more time. Mm. You're writing down, you get notes, get right? That. That's, that's super powerful. Yeah, look, I literally don't talk without a notepad. Mm. And I write notes, kids, uh, time, he needs mm. this. He wants money. He wants to buy another building. What is the thing? Yeah. And then you are now, your job is to work for him to make sure his mind understands. Yep. That's what you are as a buyer. Yeah. You're not buying for you. At least that's how I do it. Yeah. I'm not buying for me. I'm buying to make you think that you won this deal. Yeah. Right? But how can I also make money at the same time? Yeah. So he agreed. And now I had the six months to work. So we went in. Mm -hmm. We started, you know, Renovate. there was some vacant units, renovating these units, re-renting the units. He was taking the income. Yeah. Like when I re-rent the unit, he takes the income. Yeah. Because and I'm like, still you don't own the building. Yes. He was taking the income and I was spending the money, mm -hmm. but it's in the contract, you know, like if this Please, doesn't yeah, close, yeah. You, you get this, the lawyer yeah, yeah. to do that. Um, Having a good lawyer, of course. Oh, of course, <laughs> that's part of it, right? Yeah. So we worked on it. We increased the income to above what we thought we would. Mm -hmm. And then came closing time. The bank was very happy. Mm. And I told the bank about the VTB. They didn't have a problem because it made sense. Numbers. The numbers still make sense. Because a lot of the time. There is no interest on it. Yeah, a lot of the times, uh, yeah, at least that's what I was taught. Mm. Oh, banks, they don't like VTBs. Any VTB you can't do. That's not the case. You got to understand the bank wants to make money. That's number one. Number two, they want to make sure they're safe. Yeah. So if you say VTB, they think like, oh, you do, you're not putting any money of your own. You're going to let us but die. But even for the bank, you explained, here's what I want. Here's what, you know, you, your position is also safe. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. Yeah. I'm like, Yes, there's a big VTB. However, now the cash flow is here. Mm -hmm. Your debt service is perfect. And I put a lot of money in renovations and work. Yep. And I'm going to come back to you when this building is way better. And you're going to get a better deal. Yep. The building appraised way higher, right? Because I already increased the income. Yeah. So everything worked out. And we you closed on the deal now? Yeah, yeah, we closed on it. Mm -hmm. We're still working on like more so units. So technically, that's like almost 5% down for you. Are you even able to take that 5% out as well? No, I didn't take it out yet. We we'll also spend money on like renovations yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So, and the closing cost, I told you about that. Yeah. This deal like <laughs> is a little less than $200,000 in land transfer tax, which I forgot to calculate. <laughs> so yeah. it's not we were the just talking thing. about this before. <laughs> literally government took a duplex from you. Yeah, they literally <laughs> took a duplex as, you know, tax. Like you just from a land transfer tax. Yeah. But, you know, make sure if you're buying a multifamily building, especially Definitely land don't do the dumb shit that I did. So. Know what's the land transfer tax because that's a big surprise that can come at the end if you don't calculate for it. Yeah, because I never... I used to buy small stuff, so the land transfer tax wasn't really affecting my deal because I'm trying to get like a good deal. But in this case, it was a, it was a big <laughs> hit. But yeah, it's part of the deal for sure. Man, that's, a, that's a, like a one of a crazy deal that you put together. And not only that, you know, the, the, this something that I see, what's your strength is like the negotiation things, right? Like um, you do a crazy negotiation. That's like in a good way. You know, a lot of people, they, they say that they're good negotiators, but like, it's not working out in everyone's, like, you know, the deal that you just mentioned. Of course, we talked many of all your other deals, 
what are some of the things that you can like highlight that if you haven't mentioned already like if someone looking to you know negotiate anything on any multifamily deal what are some of the things that you would recommend um, do yeah so well if we're talking specifically real estate or in general the, the in general is you got to understand that the first 10 hours of calls or negotiation you're going to do are 100% going to be garbage this is just the, this is just the fact okay yeah doesn't matter how talented you are how not talented, whatever first 10 hours are complete and utter garbage mm. so you have to go through that yeah so you should go through it with the with excitement that you're trying to get the most out of these 10 hours because hour 11 is my time now mm. so th what does that look like to me it looked like talk to everyone negotiate with everyone about anything you got to be this is a muscle right mm. like sometimes when i don't do a lot of negotiations I, I drop, like my level drop, I start getting, should I ask, is he gonna think? Oh, so you have to You're gonna keep it. practicing even with the kids or wife. Like, I, and this may be dumb, but like for me, I used to wake up every day, I'm like, I have to negotiate two, three things today. What, Starbucks, Wow. I know they're not gonna give me anything, yeah. but that's not the point. The point well, is you gotta look someone in the eye, mm -hmm. hey, what, can you give me this? What about, can you give me an employee discount? Whatever it is, the, re the reason behind it is not to get something, is to flex that muscle and to be able to say it without being afraid, but also not offending the person. Yeah. Because you can say, give me a discount, eh, yeah. screw off, right? But when you ask that, you a lot of the times, they give me something. Oh, yeah. well, how about this cookie? Then? All right, take <laughs> like all the time. So that's number one, is you gotta do more of it. Yeah, okay? love And that. I know you think you're doing, but you're not. This is the reality, <laughs> I do all the, I, you, unless you write it down in somewhere, this is how many I did today, you'll mm -hmm. find that you didn't do. So if you did three a day, it's 150 a month. Wow. Right? Yeah. Oh, sorry, five a day, that's 150 a month. Yeah. So, and five could be just anything. Yeah. But Little after that month, things. you will be so much better that you can't even believe it because you'll that. have the muscle that you're not afraid. Yep. This is mainly number one, and Mike, my mentor, used to tell me this all the time. The greatest asset or skill that you can have because it's meta skill, you could apply in any realm, yep. is don't conquer your fear, your own fear, because it's all in your head, right? Yep. So you need to be able to look at this guy and ask him, yep. hey, can you give me this? And not flint, like fine, it's fine. Yeah. What are they gonna do? Say no, okay. Yeah. Well, you've been telling no way all the time anyway. Exactly. So that's that part. Now, always asking and, and always making sure that you're not afraid. Yep. Now on the other side is you need to understand what the guy you're talking to wants, right? You have to be presentable. This is yep. also something I think is under talk, like a lot of the times uh, people say, you could uh, talk however you want, wear whatever, mm. that's cool, but you're going against the grain of society, right? Mm. When you're still starting out, yeah. you wanna have as much things to help you as possible. Like yeah. if you go there drooling and with like stuff <laughs> in your eyes, you didn't wash your face, you're gonna have a harder time, right? Yeah. So try and look presentable and sound presentable. Mm -hmm. Number two is know your stuff. Like when you're asking about something, always have a reason that you're asking. Mm -hmm. I've countless times encountered people that call me and, for example, tell me like, so I told the guy I'm going to buy it with a 20% VTB. Well, why? Mm -hmm. Did you tell him why? Because like, if you don't tell him why, it doesn't make any sense. He's just going to feel this guy wants to take advantage of me. Nobody wants to feel like they're, they're the loser, yeah. right? Yeah. So you want to make sure that they feel they win. Yeah. How do you do that is by listening, writing down what they want. Yeah. And now you're looking at what they want. How can I give them this and make sure I win too? Mm. So that's always, and how that applies in real estate is, is easy, it's very easy because it's numbers, right? Yeah. You put a number, he wants $10. Yep. Okay. Can I buy it for $10 normally? No. Okay. Well, can I go to the bank and get him to get me a higher loan? Well, I can't. Can I borrow the money? It doesn't make sense because the interest, you got to go through these lines yep. until the numbers work. And then you give him the two options. I could buy it for 10 and then you're going to give me 90% VTB with 0% interest. Ask. People don't like to yeah. ask that. Ask it. I think probably 80 or 85% of any VTB I got was 0% interest. I rarely pay wow. interest. Wow. Rarely 80% of the times. Yeah, probably more. Like I only have two VTBs that are with interest and it's never more than like three, four percent. Wow. Because people, when, they, when you talk to them, you think that they want the interest because you think they're thinking like you. They're not thinking like you, okay? Yeah. So stop thinking That's about you. Stop getting in your own head. Get in this guy's head. Yeah. And why it's 0% interest? Because I tell them like, do you want like, if you want the price, this is why I need it. And mm -hmm. if I give you interest, it's not gonna work. Because yeah. 
The cash flow is $5,000. Yep. If you take $5,000 in interest, I have no money. I can't. So I cannot do this building. I can't do this deal. So here's my $5,000. Yeah. If you want it all, then you gotta give me a higher VTB. Give me yeah. 100% VTB. Well, I can't do that. Okay, well, how, what can you do? Hmm. And then you start having them on your side and our enemies this problem. Yeah. This is what you essentially oh, want to reach. Wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like instead of me against you, me trying to take money from you, this transaction rarely works unless you have an immense leverage. Mm. Like you're super rich and you're yeah. throwing money, you have leverage. That's different. Yeah. But if you if you don't have leverage and you want to work together, and in this market, like this yeah. one and the one before yeah. specifically, yeah. the seller had all the leverage. Yep. Yeah. So we want you and I to work together. Like yeah. I want to help you, I want you to help me too. Yeah. I'm new, I'm hungry, I would love some help. But this is my problem. And a lot of the times they come up with solutions. I had a building. Really? Yeah, where the seller's like, okay, well, I can't do a VTB, but how about if I get you some vacancies? I'm like, beautiful. Okay. That makes sense. Because I told him, like, vacancies are valuable to me. He's like, well, I can't do the VTB for this much. I'll get you the vacancies. Beautiful. Yeah, that Let's works. Let's do that, right? So you work together and you learn things. Yeah. Now, there's a caveat to that, like, not everybody will do that. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I learned is when you encounter the problem that you are not getting enough responses, it's usually because you're not talking to enough people. Yeah. Because you're desperate for two deals. Like desperation is the worst thing you can have in business and negotiation. If you're mm. desperate and you only have one deal, you're going to so like, you're well, how about, okay, just, it's not going to work. You need yeah. to have a pipeline. You need to talk to more people. You need to have plenty of options. Yep. So that you know this is a good option and that you're not stuck. And if I lose this, I'm like, I'm yeah. jobless now. I don't have anything to do, right? So, so you gotta get out of that desperation if you wanna do a good job with the negotiations. Like you gotta talk to more people. Yeah. When you- Yeah, you know, when you have like multiple deals on your pipeline. Yeah, it was, it this is, is not. And then you yeah. negotiate this guy, he's like being unreasonable. Yeah. Goodbye, like it's not gonna work, right? Yeah, not everything you can make it work. Yeah, if everything make it work, then you're not good. Like this is not right, <laughs> yep. right? Like you probably, there's a lot more room to yep. negotiate. Hope you guys got some value. If you did, what do you learn? Let me know in the comments below. If you still haven't hit that like button and subscribe button. For the love of God, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. This shit is hard, man. You gotta subscribe. <laughs> For more, you know, great stories like this. And just shut your mouth and go do things. Just do it.